They will rise for prayer. And please, you can still sit in front. So many of us are sitting at the back. You can go to the front. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends in Christ, in the waters of baptism, when callings, died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him in his glory. They will see for the eulogy. A member of the family should come and read the eulogy. They will see.
somebody should come and say something on his behalf. This morning, it's saying a few words on the upper brother, the father, the father, the father, and the son, you know, and the son, some of us. Good morning, all. I'm talking this morning, it's saying a few words for brother, Will, father, grandfather, and the father, and the son. We know some of us would call him Moko Moko Plantain. He was the fourth son of Sahel, our father, and also the fourth son of Celestine, our mother. Sahel having five children from a previous relationship. Celestine also having five from a previous relationship. They coming together and having five, of which we will be in the second to last. I remember him as being quiet until it is not time to be quiet. When I ask boy how you're going, it is always the same. I good, you know me. Even if he ain't good, he good. I remember our days in primary school, it's one shoot boys. Yeah, because of our different differences, he was two standards below me. So when I departed for secondary school, I said to him, Wayne, I gone, you're on your own now. After looking out for him for all these years. I remember him as one who loved jokes until one day in question when you were little who knew him well would know that you have a boss head caused by the same jokes. When you were little he never got excited for three things. One, going to South Trinidad to visit Uncle Mac and Tante Dudu for some summer vacation. Two, visiting Tante Edna on St. Francois Valley Road in Belmont. And three, visiting our father's ex-wife, Granny, as we all know her to be. Tante Dudu had benches or plates, as called in, in those days. She would remove them from time to time. And as we would say, I don't like coming here to see Tante Dudu. And she mashed mouth. I don't like to go by Tante Edna. Because she does give her water to drink in her milk cup. And granny does drink and smoke too much. When you got big, some of us in 1993, Wayne came to me one day and said he's getting married. My response to Wayne was, Boy, are you older than me? Are you supposed to get married before you? Nevertheless, the boy was serious and he did get married before me. We present here today should know and supposed to know that no marriage is perfect. We ain't had his fair share. Then he would come to me for advice, as he sometimes do, I would say to him, anything and anybody that makes you happy, boy, I hire back. When we often spoke about family, his likes and his dislikes, with what was or is going on in the family, I would say to him, Wayne, maybe there are those among us who don't understand the true meaning of the word family. Sometimes he would pay me a visit and he's like, how are you going? I would say, so far, so good. I was, would reply and say, how about you? But here the usual, I good, you know me. If things ain't good, he good. So what are you doing later? Well, you know me, I go and pull pull. We pull pull for years, coincidentally, it was 
right outside this very church with the same pulling bull many returns after work until he got his taxi badge and end the bull pulling. As I would ask, how the bull pulling going? And he would reply, no, I don't do that again, I will take taxi. The apple really don't fall far from the tree where we're concerned because, as some of us know, his father Cyril was also a bull puller after he ate the fork. And we had some granny in him for those who know him when he was alive. I would ask him, often ask him, or oh, you could be driving for Biden's whole day and still drive taxi with him. And he would reply, I like to drive. The ones fortunate enough to learn to drive from him would know how serious he took his driving. Over the years, he was never involved in any serious accidents from his love to drive. We thank God for that. There were also some other incidents and accidents involving Wayne time with us that we are also grateful for. We also want to thank him for his contribution towards his journey through this thing called life. As I said before, father, grandfather, stepfather, brother, son, joker, boy killer, driver. Never known to be no sports person. But as Wayne continues on us, into his journey with the ones gone before. We know that he will have lots of company, friends and family. His birthday coming in a few days. And as we would say, whenever we would meet for a funeral and you would hear the words, gone too soon, he would be like, how do you know that? That is he or she dead. This is their time. Do I thank you for the understanding? We all have our time just as we have in yours today. We have thanks for all the fights over the years. As brothers, when the fight done, as brothers again, we can join the fight. Brothers. Only memories, good, bad, no matter. Thanks, but regardless, my final words for you would be a older than you. I'm supposed to do safety things before you. Sleep in peace, my brother. May we rise, please? God of loving kindness, listen favorably to our prayers. Strengthen our belief that your son has risen from the dead and our hope that your servant when Collins will also rise again. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns between the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May we sit for the first reading. In the eyes of the unwise, the dead appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They are leaving us like animal nation. But they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affection, great will their blessing be. 
God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a whole holocaust. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy are where those he has chosen. This is the word of the Lord. I speak to God. With some pseudo sound. presence of the Lord in the land of the living respond. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk in the presence Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Ghost for Glory to you, Lord. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother said, Jesus, to her, we rise again. Mother said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. The Gospel of the Lord, grace to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please. My dear friends and friends, we have come to pay the last respect to our brother Wayne Collins. This is a transition to eternity. When someone dies, it reminds us of our own death. That one day we shall also exist from this world. There are some people who sing, This world is not my home. Something like that. This world is not our home. Many of us will be asking ourselves, How come about it? that this world is not our home. When we have a house, when we have a home, when we have cars, and they're telling us that this world is not our home. So which place is our home? If this place is not our home? But when we leave, when we see, we find out that this place is not our home. We can't live here forever. Nobody lives in this world forever. I normally give an example, I told them, I, told, I tell people, when this church started in 80-something, if I'm not mistaken, those who started this church at that time, who were worshippers, where are they now? All those who started this church at this inception, how many of them are still alive up to now? And so many other generations have come and gone until the present generation. That is how it takes. There will be a time, not even one person who is sitting down or standing up here now, would be alive. It's a very hard saying that then we have to accept the reality that death is also part of our existential uh, is part of our existence that one day we shall die people come into this world people exist exist from the world have we ever taken our time and asked ourselves when i die where will i find myself how many of us ask ourselves that question if i'm no more where will I find myself? If death is inevitable, if I die, where will I find myself? So when somebody dies, we begin to think about our own death. Oftentimes, death does not ring bell. It doesn't ring bell. Once it comes, the person, once it knocks, the person goes immediately. Just like people, children are born every day, that is also how people die on daily basis. We don't even know the time of our own death. Somebody sent, uh, 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 somebody sent, um, is that a video clip? that is posted something into my WhatsApp 
And in that WhatsApp, you see, in, 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 in that my WhatsApp page, there are people who are lining up and some flying. Those ones that knew is symbolic of those who have died. He said that all of us are in a line. All of us. And the people die on daily basis. But when you get to the front, you don't know. That way, on the line does not mean that when you look at those who are before you, maybe billions of people are before you, and you think if you never, before it can get your turn, it will take time. No. You won't know when you'll be in the front. So it's telling us that we need to be prepared. In this life, we are journeying to eternity. We are making a journey. We are on transit. We are on transit. Somebody goes to the market, to the grocery, to the supermarket, you buy something and you go. Another person comes, he buys, he or she buys his own and he goes. That is how life is. When you play your part, you move. Another person will play his or her own part. And Shakespeare says, and all the world is stage, and we are merely players. All the world is stage, and we are merely players. When you play your own, you leave the stage. Another person will come and play his or her own. So our brother Wayne Collins has played his own part. He has played his role well. God has called him to come and stay with him in eternity. If he hadn't led a good life, many of us wouldn't have been here. Those of you who know him well, he say, oh, while he was alive, was a very kind man, was a charitable man, was a very jolly fellow, and a very friendly. He must have assisted the poor, the needy, and so on and so forth. You have a lot of good things to say about him. And that's why you have left everything to pay him the last respect. Assuming he didn't lead a good life, he wouldn't have been here. If he had not touched your life in one way or the other, he wouldn't have been here. But you're here because he must have impacted on your life positively. So dear friends in Christ, we have to go into introspection and examine our functions on how we are living our lives. Am I living a good life? Am I living a bad life? A life we have a choice to make and, the, and our choices can make or mar us. On daily basis, we have a choice to make. Either we are choosing what is good, or we choose what is bad or evil. So, good and evil, light and darkness, are walking side by side. People choose darkness. Some choose darkness. Some prefer darkness to light. It's choice. I will choose darkness. Some choose evil to goodness. Instead of choosing goodness, they say, they, you, you, the person chooses uh, evil. So some prefer darkness to light. Some prefer living a good life. Uh, some would prefer living a bad life to living a good life. So in life, we make choice. And the choice we make determine our eternal destiny. When we die, it is the choice we make here, now that we are still alive, that will determine how we live hereafter. If you made a good choice, you'll find yourself in a place or in a state where those who have made good choice are staying. 
If you made a bad choice or a wrong choice, you also see those who made similar choices. The example is here in the Bible, where the rich man saw Lazarus, and he was in a state of uh, uh, hurt. He was he was thirsty. He was in flames, and he saw Lazarus and Abraham. He said, "Father Abraham." Tell Lazarus to dip the, 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 his finger in water to quench my thirst because I am thirsty here. Frozen. I need some water. What did Abraham tell him? Abraham said, Remember when you were on earth, you had all the good things in life, just like uh, Lazarus had the bad things of life. Now, there is a chasm, there is a gulf between you and those who are where Lazarus is. Those who are where Lazarus is cannot go to where you are. And where you are, you can't go to where Lazarus is. And when the man found out that he can no longer make progress, he said, please, Father Abraham, Tell somebody to go and tell my brother so that they wouldn't leave the type of life I led. Otherwise, they would still come and stay with me here. What did Abraham answer? You have Moses, you have the prophets, you have the word of God. If they don't listen, even if somebody should come from the dead, they wouldn't listen. So, that scenario has a vivid description of what we suffer or what we enjoy upon our transition from this world. If you made a good choice, you will be happy. If you made a bad choice, you will see yourself in a state of torment, in a state of lack, in a state where you'll be tossing. That is it. When the man was alive, he created a gulf, he created a chasm between himself and poor people, vulnerable people. He had the best of clothes to wear, he had the best of food, he had the best of merriment, he changes his wares, he changes his wares often, eats a delicious food. Lazarus used to come to his house with torn shirts and uh, his body full of uh, sores. He will eat, drink, and he will be insensitive to the plight of Lazarus. So Lazarus represents poor people, vulnerable people, those who have no one to care for them. He was in a position to take Lazarus to hospital, to bandage his wounds, just like the good Samaritan did, to feed him, because he had a lot to feed, a lot of food. He closed his eyes to the poor man, Lazarus. And when he finishes, Lazarus will be trying to eat what dropped from his table. And if he finds none, he will be scavenging, trying to eat the one for the pigs. No, the, the pigs' food, that is what he will be struggling with. The beast man had all it takes to feed this young man, change his wares, take him to the hospital, bandage his wounds, treat him, and help him to become something in life. Help him. The resources are there. He doesn't need to borrow to do that. But he closes his eyes. Just as he closes his eyes, now he is there. And he's finding this poor boy that used to come to my house. Is that so? And he's in a very happy state. He doesn't lack anything. And look at me suffering here. Tell him to dip his finger and come and tell me. It wasn't possible because what we sow is what we reap. That time, Lazarus was telling him, 
please give me food. Please bandage my wound. Please change my ways. Please provide shelter for me. Please, I am in, in I am hungry. And if you read Matthew chapter 25, Colin say, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was naked, you clothed me. I was in prison, you came to visit me. I was a stranger, you welcomed me. And the righteous people will say, they said, right, when did we see you put a naked or we refuse to do it? When you refuse to do it to any of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. So when somebody dies, it is a time for us to examine our conscience, ask ourselves, how am I living my life? What is my attitude to the poor, to the vulnerable, to those who are in lack, to those who are suffering, to those who need my help? What is my attitude to them? Do I share what God has given to me with them? Do I reach out to the poor? Do I assist people with my connection, with my position in life? Do I assist people? Or do I like to see people suffer? Do I like to see people in agony? Or do I inflict hardship and pain on people? Do I treat people wickedly instead of showing them love? Instead of caring for them? Instead of helping them to mitigate their problems, how do I treat people? Do I think I will be here forever? And so many people who are well to do have left their wealth, their resources, everything, and left. So many. When they leave it and you go into their account, you see a lot of money stacked there. And they never, or some of them never assisted anybody. Even those who knock on their door, we have turned away. Somebody said, some of our representatives in government, some of them have big dogs, assistant dogs. So that's when we know they are around. When they are around, you see the dog will be barking. <laughs> With that type of dog, you can't even enter their house. You cannot, because the dog will tear the person into pieces. You see? So some use dogs and barricade their house. Create a sort of fence. Using dogs to scare people away so that people will not come. So that the widows will not come and beg for food or whatever, so that young people who have no jobs will not come and say, Sir, Madam, can you help me to get a job? Whatsoever you do to the leaves of my brethren, thus you do unto me. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. Now enter into the room of my Father. What you have to do to the least of my conclude this hopefully with the gospel reading we have just read taken from St. John's Gospel chapter 11 from verse 21 to 27. Martha was worried that when they sent for Jesus to come and heal their brother, Jesus couldn't come immediately. And after four days, Jesus came and the brother had been in the tomb for four days. And Martha is saying, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, 
God will do it for you. And Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Yes, I know my brother will rise again on the last day. Martha didn't know that the person talking with her is the resurrection and the life. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, even if he dies, he shall live. Do you believe this? Martha said, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. Jesus decided not to come when Lazarus was ill, even though his attention was needed urgently. But he did it willfully because he wanted to teach us an eternal truth that all those who will die in the peace of Christ that their souls will rest in peace, that they wouldn't be lost forever. And the first reading taken from the book of wisdom, he says, the souls of the virtues are in the hand of God, and no evil will torment them. The souls of the virtues are in the hand of God. So my dear friends in Christ, if we die with Christ, we shall rise with him. All those who have died in the peace of Christ don't need to worry. Psalm 23 says, Even if I find myself in the midst of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are there with your cook and your staff, and they comfort me. And at the end, the psalmist says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house, shall I dwell forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, we pray for Wayne Collins, who had finished his work on the earth, and now transiting to eternity. We accompany him with our prayers, praying that the Lord will forgive We commiserate with the direct family, the wife, the children, the siblings, the neighborhood, friends, well wishers, all of you that have come here today to bid him farewell. We pray that the good Lord will bless you, comfort you in your affliction, and grant you joy mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. They will rise pray of the faithful. Our response shall be, Lord, hear us. Respond. Lord, hear us. God, the Almighty Father, raised Jesus Christ, his son from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. Respond. Lord, hear us. During Easter, we light the pastor candle, the station where we are celebrating funeral, so that those who die in the peace of Christ will also rise with him in glory. For our brother Wayne Collins, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may not be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. Graciously hear us. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the family and friends of our brother Wayne Collins, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In the silence of your hearts, may you pray for your private petition. And remember our brother when Collins, in your prayers, asking the good Lord to forgive his human weakness. Forgive him for many times he must have transgressed against the will of God. For many times he must have faulted by sin and admit him into eternal happiness. Yet there will be compassion. Here there will be where there wouldn't be sorrow again. Here there will be joy. Here there will be peace. And here there will be tranquility. And here there will be eternal life. Raise 
And we sang, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Wayne Collins. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall try to regret him again. When the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Wayne Collins. And now we come, into, we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in pardon, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see him again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will dispass in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend our brother Wayne Collins in a sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, we will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which we bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, come to us also and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, Wayne Collins and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother and colleagues forever. To you, O oh Lord, we commend the soul of Wayne Collins, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he may have committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant him eternal Peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We gather here to commend our brother Wayne Collins to God our Father and to commit his body to the earth in the spirit of faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let us raise our voice and offer prayers for him. Before, because God has chosen to call our brother Wayne Collins from this life to himself, we commit his body to earth. For we are those, and unto those we shall return.
But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother when calling to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and grace his body on the last day. May we bow our heads and pray for God's blessings. Almighty ever living God, you know the anguish of the sorrowful, you are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. He has this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you know where grant unto him, O Lord, and let the perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and his soul so the to the powerful, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the love of God and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ bless and console us and gently wipe away, wipe every tear from our eyes. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Wayne Collins, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the mothers come to welcome you and lead you to the Holy Spirit in the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is for no longer, may you find eternal rest. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. So before we process out of the church, believe me to thank all of you, especially the members of the direct family. The wife, is the wife here? Who is the wife? The wife and the children, who are the children? Yourself, which other person? Okay, so we say sorry, take heart. The members of the family, May God console you in your grief. Take consolation that you led a good life. You did his well, you did his part, you played his part, you played his role well in serving God and helping people. And we pray that God will prepare a place of happiness, a place of peace, a place of joy, so that He will rejoice with all the saints in heaven. Thank you, every other person that came here to be power to me. And I pray that God will bless you and bless your families. And as you depart from this place, may God grant you joy mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen.
So 